I, I hand you over to uh, Roger, Roger uh, Sylvester Bradley uh, from ADIS. Roger is head of uh, crop performance, I think is your title, and uh, Roger brings uh, biological sciences to us. I think you're a physiologist by training and, and a professor of physiology at the uh, University of Nottingham in the UK. Uh, Roger and Daniel uh, lead a very successful uh, group um, there out of ADAS in the UK uh, who have who have bracketed their uh, services through the great term of agronomics uh, or intelligence uh, to farmers with farmers uh, through data. Roger, if I can hand over to you uh, to give us a bit of a hit on biology. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. And um, yes, Daniel and I are both <clears throat> crop physiologists and um, we work for ADAS, which derived from the government's extension service in the UK. Um, it still has the same acronym, ADAS, Agricultural Development Advisory Service, that we were, but we're a private company um, uh, and have been so for 20, more than 20 years now. Um, and uh, with uh, being physiologists, very concerned with maximizing the value of biology and particularly crop physiology to crop farmers. And um, I, that's what I'm going to uh, describe is what we have to conclude is modest value of biology in farming. And there are various reasons for that. But we're doing this in the context of on-farm experimentation, OFE. And I just want to take uh, a moment to just consider that acronym and why we use this other word to describe what we're doing. Basically, I've always experimented on-farm, but I've only experimented on farms with farmers, with them deciding what wants to happen for about five years. Before that, they were all experiments done by the extension organization for the purposes of creating generalized knowledge okay and uh, so but what we mean here and i'm fairly sure the whole community in ispa that calls itself the community for on-farm experimentation actually means digitally enabled so the e becomes about the e of email and all the other e's um digitally enabled participatory uh farm centric research or action research and and so we that there's no good acronym for that so we uh, have coined this word agronomics so the study of the farmed biome it is everything to do with the farmed biome that we're really uh, concerned and uh, having worked in the organization for about 10 years this is 30 years ago i uh, i was very preoccupied with the my failure basically to show any worth to my physiology. I had I worked with modeling community, which is obviously trying to describe the whole of crop physiology, but no crop models are used. So it, it, by farmers on farms, well, I might be able to talk about some um, exceptions to that, but virtually the, the simulation modeling world has been totally unsuccessful in using it uh, to inform farmers in their decisions. So let's consider, I, I, I look back at uh, Jakob Ronowski's brilliant uh, TV series and book about the ascent of man. How have we made progress? And we've made progress by working from what we know or what we believed, and it may have been some uh, remote god, or it may have been something slightly more scientific, but gradually we built up knowledge by seeing and assessing what we did when we put a seed in the ground and, and, and uh, worked out what happened as a result of that. We sat around the campfire and uh, debated what we could have done better, and that may have been well informed or badly informed. We then acted and we compared, and generally the comparisons have been with what happened last year or what happened in the past. Um, occasionally we've made mistakes or we've intentionally done something spatially uh, side by side, and we've made our comparisons not involving statistical analysis and, and 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 recognition of the uncertainties and the random variation but uh, occasionally we've done uh, a sort of informal experimentation and that 
as we've gone round and around and around and around over millennia has built our uh, uh, the progress we've made so far and you could argue that the rapid progress we've made has been a result of experimentation in the last 100 years but i would argue and certainly my experience in an extension organization is that the number of decisions that that uh, james was talking about just now the number of decisions that a farmer has to make and the number of contexts in which those decisions are made are so myriad that there is very little chance of experimentation informing many of them most of them have to be made uh, in in a in a, a much less formal way so the question we have in these webinars and and in the ultimate conference that we've got in the autumn is well in the autumn in the northern hemisphere is what difference can the digital 21st century technologies make to this whole process and we've uh, purposely in in our exercise that Daniel and I and our colleagues have been involving ourselves in have started with the process rather than the digitization. So um, what I want to do, do now is to show you what we've been doing with our agronome. This is our lovely agronome. And we've set up, I mean, we didn't know it would grow so, so big and so successful at the beginning in 2012, but we set up what we called a yield enhancement network. We picked yield as the performance metric because it, it, it is so vital to the sustainability of farming generally, and uh, it's, it's vital in lots of contexts. But what, we, what we've been preoccupied as as physiologists, oh, sorry, I should have just said that the choice of yield is just an example. We believe that this process is applicable to any particular outcome of farming. So uh, it might be carbon footprinting, it might be crop nutrition, it might be lots of things. But this is uh, this what we've actually been working on so far primarily is yield. And our understanding of yield is represented, our scientific understanding is represented by us as crop physiologists. We have our models which we know are pretty useless, but what we've what we've actually produced uh, which farmers do use and particularly students use is are, are what we call our crop growth guides so the crop growth guides describe the biological processes of aging and growth that result in our ultimate yield and and then when we when we've gone on to farm in these last eight years or whatever it is that we've been running the yen uh, we found that well first of all farmers very rarely measure yield in a in a rigorous enough way that you can compare one farm with another so we set up a competition because a competition is a tool is a vice that allows everybody to trust everybody else otherwise it's not a, a it's a functional competition so we set up a competition but it was a competition with ontologies of metrics that were dictated by the crop growth guides. So we have explanatory measurements that go with the yield measurements. And those are those are dis demonstrated with these benchmarking diagrams so that everybody can see for every metric, every explanatory metric, as well as for the ultimate performance metric, they can see their performance against everybody else's uh, with a box and whisker uh, representing the middle half and the full range so and and there's also in there there's a benchmark which is shows which is, comes from the crop growth guides which uh, and the growth guides describe a successful crop and i'm going to deal with that a bit more in a minute but the the real value and the reason that these farmers stay with us is in this 24 page post-mortem report that we provide every year. It's not sort of digitally sophisticated. It's, it, it certainly is a huge amount of work. We're working hard to try and automate it as much as we can, um, but it contains more than 100 explanatory metrics for the yields, and it contains a potential yield, which is our Bio biophysically determined potential that we, using our physiology we can define and which the farmers can understand so they can reason and that's a very important word reason about why they got what they got whether they came first or last they can see the reasons for that and then that feeds into the powwow process if you like so 
sharing and developing ideas of what to change where this is absolutely fundamental to the whole process and and as james was saying some of the some of the combinations of contexts and options uh, are are very fine and certainly not uh, material for experimentation but but nevertheless they're they're essential in order to proceed into the next year or the next cycle of of uh, production and uh, then so that the ideas that that uh, are used there they may be just a, a new product a new timing of a product uh, uh, a new uh, uh, technique so a new practice some of some sort or they may be a whole new system but whatever they are they the important thing is that there are measurements so that they can be compared with, at least compared with last time. And that's the, the, the informal experimentation, which I would say is the predominant part of our route to progress. We have to support that part of the process before we deal with the ex much more expensive and, and however clever we are in automating it. I mean, that is my dream that this becomes very cheap, but and, and very quick and very simple and very easy and very automated. But nevertheless, the number of contexts and the number of options is, um, well, it's it's uh, qu uh, what we talk about is is uh, a quadrillion quadrillion, probably ten to the power thirty for every crop grown every year. So it's it's just beyond us to address all of that and we have to be much cleverer than we are at the moment and we don't have the answers to this uh, in our group uh, so i'm really interested to be involved in this uh, exercise into the future is how you pick the right questions um, and how you generalize from what you find one year so that it informs you uh, to make a better decision the next year as james was saying now um so we, we the, the the actual conduct of the experiments is quite complicated, as as we all, and anybody who's done one of these experiments with farmers will know uh, that there that there's all sorts of issues that they need to understand, particularly the soil variation and the need to try and accommodate the soil variation, which can easily mislead any comparisons that the informal comparisons that they were making thus far. So. Uh, We've produced a free guide that anybody can get off the uh, ADES website. Um, but what we're doing now, and what Daniel particularly is involved with, is building the digital infrastructure that now we've got this cycle uh, where we're actually making useful measurements that use the biology, that feed into the discussion process, that we we have a, a digital platform with the uh, involving all the essential partners that can that, that basically everybody knows where to go in order to help themselves round this and round and round this cycle so that we can enhance the rate of progress for goodness me that's what we've got to do so just a, a quick explanation of our biology so this is this is in one slide how crops grow so we uh, this is what the the central diagram in each of these crop guides so it has four axes the diagonal axis is is a thermal time axis which describes how the crop ages the downward axis is a water capture axis the horizontal axis is a a, a light or what uh, um solar energy axis and then the vert the upward axis is the growth axis and you can see there that the 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 sort of numbers that come up as benchmarks in our uh, in our crop guides and what we've been able to do is to select just four of the parameters from the growth guides to say we, we know there's variation about those we, we if we pick the best value or something close to the best value for each of those four values then we can get to a biophysical potential so we've got 100 millimeters more water capture 60 percent uh, energy capture often 50 percent energy capture 1.4 tons per terajoule energy conversion instead of 1.2 and 60 percent harvest index instead of 50 and that gives us uh, a, a biophysical potential which it, it, it's only a matter of belief it has to be a matter of belief because uh and but farmers believe it because they they have crop mon crop uh yield monitors and they can see 
hills like this occurring in patches on their fields. So it, it, there's not really any question about whether it's possible. It's just reasoning how to get there. And that's what we use the biology for. So just uh, last slide before I conclude. So th this is this is an example of the on the, basically explaining the ontologies that we use for explanation of yields so we that we produce a we, we we describe the phenotype and we describe it in terms of age and in terms of size um and and there are uh, lots of individual metrics and we you know they're not all automated this is the the funny thing to me is that the uh the digital community somehow hasn't looked comprehensively at what current science needs in terms of observations but also there's the environment and the germplasm that all has to be quantified and when we but this data set we've now realized is sort of generally uh, useful so we're creating a data uh, a data set uh, and daniel's just achieved a a, a um, comprehensive data set from all the ends uh, uh, that have operated up until now. So it has about getting on for 3,000 yields so far. Um, these are field yields generally. So we're not working at subfield scale. But um, the important thing is that we have a sort of a, a decent representation of most of these metrics in order to explain what we do. So to conclude, biology is too quantitatively uncertain to uh, dictate exact decisions. We cannot do it like that. My exception would possibly be uh, the Penn and Monteith equation that guides us with our irrigation decisions. But but there are one or two exceptions like that. But otherwise, really, the biology is not there yet. Um, so we we use biology to resolve our decisions because we have to predict always into the future, into another world which we haven't yet experienced yet. So we have to use some means of of uh, of reasoning in order to to get to our ultimate decisions. But secondly, there is there is scope, and this is always the, my ultimate ambition is that because we're working on farms with farmers with real crops, then there is scope for feedback into biology and therefore a measure of real biological process progress as well as farming progress. So biology has modest value for farming is what I would say. Um, I mean, our examples from the yen are that our participants are now thinking about energy conversion. That's that's their job is energy conversion. They never thought like that before. Um, they, then we've discovered the value of analyzing grain for the nutrients it contains. It's absolutely invaluable. We started a whole new yen just to do that, to help them do that. Um, we've discovered that, uh, and this is very relevant to what James was saying about the difficulty of generalization, that, that farms are far more important than variety in accounting for the level of performance that we're getting. Um, so, uh, and this farm factor comes out of our data, set, uh, yes. our data sets again and again. Um, uh, but we believe farming can inform biology. And examples again from the end there are that, although we, we strangely didn't expect this, that big yields come from large crops or uh, vice versa. So um, the, the uh, we always thought harvest index was was really what we should be trying to maximize, but it's not. It's the total amount of biomass. And that uh, w w this, uh, I don't know whether physiologists are listening, but there is a, a sort of debate about the importance of source and sink in terms of uh, what how assimilate is produced. So we have a source of assimilate and we have a sink for assimilate and that uh, it might be one or the other controlling the rate of growth. Well, we, we've coined this notion due to the way farmers, the good farmers are really seen to be growing their crops of crop momentum, which is keeping the source and the sink uh, synchronized uh, together. So I, I've probably run over time and I apologize. For yeah. that. <laughs>